Hi, my name is Grace Carol Bomer. Uh, what else do you want to know? I've always wanted to do art since I was very young, uh, probably in, before high school. You didn't become an artist. You became a nurse, a teacher, or a secretary. That's how old I am. So um, I wanted to do art. And my mom was from the city. She was a teacher, and she did art. And my, and my dad's relatives, the women in the family, all painted. They just loved to do art. But it wasn't, you, weren't, you didn't become an artist. I wasn't very grown up. Maybe at that time they were smart to send me to a liberal arts Christian education in Iowa, which was Dutch Reformed. That's why my background, that background to me is extremely important in how I deal with my art today. I became an English major because they didn't have a good art department even there. Uh, English major and a history minor, which informs my work today because my work is very much about uh, metaphor and how do you make a good story, how do you make tell a story, it's related to art. I got started because I had to make the house payment. So my art was never a hobby. It was, I wanted to do it anyway, but this was like, okay, let's, let's do this. You gotta make the house payment. I call them today pretty little paintings. And I did a lot of bank shows. Uh, I entered the North, I mean the, Kansas watercolor show. This was like I was asking God, this, is this my job? I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna enter this national, well, he was a national judge, but it was a state show. And uh, I not only got in, but I got a purchase award. So it was like a green light, God, yes, this, you're an artist, do this. I talk about specific pieces of literature that affect my work. Uh, like I, there's one over there you can take a photograph it's called Leviathan it's Moby Dick and the, the struggle uh, Melville is in against God the great white whale and that whole book is very religious so great literature deals with religion and so does great art they are dealing with the Christ figure they are dealing with um, serious issues that's why they're great so when I teach today I tell students you need to deal with serious issues because then you will be somebody. If you're just going to be on the surface, not really thinking about reality, you're not going to really get anywhere. If you want to be known, deal with who Jesus is because you will be known. But it wasn't until uh, going through some very difficult times spiritually, I mean hard times, where you're suffering, where you, you look to God when you go through hard times, right? That's just what happens. And that when you're in that broken down condition, then you really want your work to be that too. Because I remember praying to God, uh, okay, God, this is not about me. I don't want to do these paintings just for me. How do I do them for you? Like, it's all yours, take it away. And I remember when the time, when I was going through hard times at that time, God was just taking care of this anyway because he sent a Christian businessman to me who said, your work is worth way more than you're asking. Enter that show, I did enter that, Surely He Hath Borne Our Sorrows into a show at Touchstone Gallery in Hendersonville. I said, okay, I'll put a thousand dollars on it and see what happens, and it sold immediately. And it was like God saying, yes, you need to just start doing art that's like this and that you can ask more money for. I was asking like $300 for big paintings at that time. This is many years ago. <laughs> Things have changed since then. So I'll continue at Western Carolina and my critique. 30 students in the room and the teachers, and they really gave me a hard time. They said, you are preaching at us you're preaching at us. And so I said, here I am a student from all these people and I'm saying, no, we all, we're all, man has created religious, we're all religious, we all worship something to, to be true. Worship means worship. What are you giving worth to? It might be your iPhone. I don't know what you're worshiping, but you're worshiping something. We're created to worship and we are created to be followers and we do follow things, right?
Okay, here we have, this is from a show called Global City Babel that I had at Cairn University last fall. And I, they were all, this, the whole series was about the Tower of Babel. So this one is called 40 Years. And 40 years is a, a symbol in scripture that uh, 40 years in the desert, 40 years in the ark. It's a time of suffering, a time of tribulation. The importance of suffering in your life, because suffering is what draws you to God. So, But these ladders, are symbols of man trying to reach up to God. You know, like Jacob's ladder connected heaven and earth, that vision that Jacob had, remember, in the Bible? And the ladder is that symbol of connecting heaven and earth together. Well, you can see this tower looks a little bit broken down. <laughs> so it's kind of like a big wedding cake, or like, like, look at the shape of it. That is my motif. But you see, also, here's some interesting little motif I use a lot. Those are 40 number tallies. There's, there's eight of five here, 40 years of suffering and there you can see some windows and broken down stuff here but the 40 is very symbolic for me and it's in a lot of my work I went to this class and he said uh, he was trying to break me of my stylization and my ability to pay, be able to paint right realism so he said I want you to close your eyes and draw off the side of the bed with your left hand just what's in your head and not just see what comes up. So I did scriptures and I did, Lord, show me your glory. It was this kind of childish drawing of a man on an ash heap reaching up. I still have the painting. It was like a Job-like figure. It's straw, the color of gold, straw and gold on, and charcoal and ashes and, and the symbolism of that. And I have a poem that goes around it. So my poetry is starting to become entwined in this and scripture. And that was at, at uh, Western Carolina. That was only one class, but it really did change my life because I just started painting very uh, much more in my mind of what the scriptures mean and, and uh, painting not perfect realism, but more abstract. Asheville has been a big influence, but it was a big art community. When we moved to Asheville, I was painting for the large paintings, uh, watercolors for the Kansas Watercolor Society. So the October show was in the museum. The museum, Asheville Art Museum, was in the basement of the Civic Center at that time. And I remember we moved here in August and in September, the October show. I already had a painting in the Asheville October show and got in an award or something but so I just this transition was very easy because it was such an art community here. As far as my business goes I guess having a studio in the River Arts District has really helped a lot and I always had Christian content people finding me online or whatever because they would type in Christian artist in Asheville or some of my big patrons, they found me just because maybe his wife was wanting, this happened, uh, wanting a painting above their medal that dealt with the fishermen, Jesus, and the fishermen. They had been to the Sea of Galilee. They were Catholic Christians, and uh, the way they found me was just by typing in my a search engine, Christian art. Well, my art was not very distinctively Christian until about 1990s. You know, when I was doing those rending veils and I was doing more Christian themes. Because my work was very abstract, you'd get it. And because of the titles on my work, they knew I was a Christian. But because they respected me because it was well done. It was abstract, it was powerful. This is my large COVID piece. I had this monster canvas and I was doing some house cleaning. So the top part is my paper shades. There's another one over there, but I took this shade off and it's included in this top piece that had all these great lines, sun streaked. And I love the color. And I was working on a show called Global City Babel anyway. And it was during COVID lockdown and I was taking things out of the newspaper. You can see at the bottom, crash course in online learning. So many infections in the millions, a uh, rift between China and the U.S. And I have been to Ukraine. I have, and I actually have a Russian banknote in the bottom 
right corner that is very prophetic that I didn't know this was done in the in, in 2020 I mean yeah 2020 that year I don't remember exactly when but it's it's a picture of the antithetical struggle we're in the anti-god antithesis you know that's what that means and so the top part there, you can see the Tower of Babel, that big dark area. And I made the top of the Tower of Babel using binary code. Uh, all those zeros and ones say your days are numbered. And it means to somebody that's very fearful because you're wearing masks, you're going to die. But for me as a Christian, I also know my days are numbered. God has got them numbered. He knows me like he knows the hairs on my head. He knows how long I'm going to live and die so that that is a very a double meaning for everybody and then the bottom part this large circular shape there's several uh references to that like the barley loaf that knocks over the in scripture where the god's kingdom knocks down the feet of the, the kingdoms of the earth and there's a lot of scripture text written in here if you look closely there's words in there but it's this struggle between uh, God's kingdom and man's kingdom. As far as having opposition today in my studio and doing work, my work is told slant, like Emily Dickinson, the writer, the poet said, tell it slant. Jesus spoke in parables. Uh, he used a lot of metaphors, a lot of similar, like the story of salvation is told in such a way. God opens your eyes anyway, but people that have eyes that are open can see it. But if you don't, you're looking at it as a story with, I am the door, Jesus said, or I'm the pearl of great price. I could do a pearl. I could do pearl divers, and it would have religious meaning. You know what I'm saying? But you're all religious, so whatever you're painting, you have a, a world and life at view of your life and you're painting out of that. So somebody that's doing meaninglessness, like random, whatever, that's their religious art. They're painting, worshiping, there's something there.